Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be trying to answer the question, if you can only buy one of these two games, which one should you buy? Super Mario Brothers Wonder or Sonic Superstars? Now making this video today sort of feels almost crazy because I grew up in the 90s and back then this was a regular discussion on the playground. I mean, in the midst of the 16-bit console war, everyone was arguing who was better Mario or Sonic. Personally, back in the day, I was a Genesis kid more than a Super Nintendo. My brother had the Super Nintendo, so I did play Mario nonetheless, but I would have definitely lined up with Sonic. But today, the circumstances are way different than they were 30 years ago. It's just crazy that we're having almost the same debate. I've actually played through and finished both games on stream, so you can always check out those replays if you want to. They are not 100% runs, they are pretty much a straight playthrough. And before we get started in any of this, I do want to point out, I really do think that both games ended up being pretty great. And the point of today's video isn't to diminish either one of the games, but rather help guide you if you really only have the budget or the ability to pick one. And because that's the truth for most things in life, the right choice won't be the same for everyone, and ultimately in the end will depend on you. Now let's jump into this epic debate. Just remember, if you are liking the video, hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. Let's hit that 20k subscriber mark. So first, let's briefly break down what distinguishes each game. And let's start with Sonic. Now this is a return of the mainline series to what is mostly 2D gameplay. Now many will call this 2.5D as the sprites and some elements of the gameplay do give the illusion of a third dimension. 2D gameplay is how the Sonic franchise started, and in my opinion, where it was at its best. And for me, this entry is no different. Offering interesting level designs, but most importantly, that great feeling of speed that the series is known for. The game also offers four different playable characters from the start, with Knuckles probably being the most hyped returning character, and also up to four player local co-op. There's also an online multiplayer, but it is a separate mode reserved to that, and it's not available in story mode. There are also multiple minigame levels for chasing down Chaos Emeralds, collecting coins, and more. Now many of these are a nostalgic throwback and an enjoyable experience. Except in my case, I would say for those regarding the Chaos Emeralds. Those levels did feel clunky and slightly frustrating. Now the difficulty level throughout Sonic is pretty much a steady increase, until you hit the last few zones where it increases significantly. The boss fights are for the most part well designed, with a mix of light puzzle elements and skill based gameplay. Except once again for a couple of instances where they fell too drawn out and can become frustrating and tedious. Overall, if you're a classic Sonic fan, this is an excellent entry in the franchise that follows the path laid out in Sonic 2, 3, and Sonic CD. And hopefully, this will be the direction Sega takes from now on for the Sonic franchise. Now, let's jump over to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now, just as in Sonic, this is once again a return of the mainline series to where it started, that of mostly 2D gameplay. And yet again, this is more like a 2.5D gameplay setup, with many elements of the gameplay giving the illusion of depth and a third dimension. Now Mario, contrary to Sonic, has had outings that can be considered just as successful in both the 2D and 3D genre. Therefore, the preference for 2D or 3D is often a personal one in the case of Mario. Now having grown up playing the original Super Mario Brothers, and my personal favorite being pretty much a deadlock between Super Mario Brothers 3 and Super Mario World, this game fell right into my wheelhouse. That being said, my expectations were also a lot higher. You have up to 8 playable characters in Wonder, with most likely the biggest surprise return being Nabbit, the purple rabbit thief, and once again you can play up to 4 players locally. Online experience here is very different, being able to play with friends or random other players, but just as shadow characters, with no real direct interaction except upon death where they can actually save you. The level designs here are amazing, offering a variety of new and returning mechanics that get even better and more diverse the more you progress through the game. The biggest of these new mechanics being the Wonder Flower, that has a massive effect on the levels, 
often bringing them to life in ways never quite seen before. The approach to difficulty is also quite unique, with every level being categorized from 1 to 5 stars. However, many of the most difficult levels here are actually optional. This is a really interesting approach, where from time to time, if a level is being too frustrating, you can often move on and come back later, or even not at all. Now there are some levels that are required to progress, but they often top out at around 3 stars. Overall, this is an amazing entry in the series that just might set a new bar for the future of 2D Mario games. So now that we've set the stage and I've given my brief thoughts about each one of the games, you can probably see that they actually have a lot of things in common. So here is how I think you should go about choosing which one of these two games is right for you. Now let's start with Prior Affinity. If you're a huge Sonic fan and you've never been much of a Mario fan, well, the choice should be easy. You go with Sonic. And vice versa, if you're a huge Mario fan and you've never been much of a Sonic fan, well, once again, the choice should be easy. You're going with Mario. But if you're watching this video, you're most likely either a fan of both or maybe a fan of none yet. Or you're maybe buying this for someone who fits that description. Well, if that's the case, I have to say that I would definitely lean towards Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Now Sonic, although it is a great entry in the series, and a nice potential positive direction, I don't see it really being in the conversation for the best 2D Sonic game of all time. And if you've ever played a 2D Sonic game in the past, and you weren't necessarily blown away, I really don't see this game changing your mind. Mario, on the other hand, is most likely from now on out, going to be in the discussion for the best 2D Mario game of all time. Now, not everyone will be placing it at the top, but it will definitely be in the discussion. And I would also argue that if you played something like, let's say, Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, and you were not that impressed with a 2D Mario game, well, this game does have the potential to change your mind. Now, secondly, let's look at approachability and difficulty which in my opinion is a standout factor between the two games. Now, first of all, if you're a person who does enjoy a slight challenge or you're buying for someone who does, this won't really be a factor because both games eventually offer a decent challenge without going too crazy. However, if you're buying for a more casual gamer or maybe a younger gamer just building their skills, then once again, Mario Wonder would most likely be the better choice. Now this comes down to, as I mentioned earlier, their approach to difficulty. Mario makes a lot of it optional till very late in the game, while in Sonic, it is mandatory to progress towards the second half of the game. So in the case of Sonic, your pleasure in the game might come to a dead stop till you can beat the challenge, while in Mario, you can just go and do something else, while you build up your skills and still have a ton of fun elsewhere. And I would especially say that for parents buying a game for a younger player, this difference is a huge standout in my opinion, making Mario a much safer option. Now lastly, we get to my favorite comparison, and that's looking at the numbers, the price tag. As in, which is the financially more savvy option to pick up right away? Now for the moment at full price, both are at a standstill, selling for $60 a piece. But the secret here is that Nintendo and Sega have two very different marketing strategies. And although there are no guarantees, it does make one a smarter choice for an early pickup, and the other one a better option if you're going to wait a bit. And just in case you don't know, the majority of my channel's content is actually based on following deals and price trends, so I generally get more wins than losses in this category. So first of all, if we're going for an early immediate pickup, I would say that the smart choice here is Mario once again. And why is that? Well, that's because Nintendo rarely discounts their first party games in the first 6 to 12 months after they release. And when they do, it's not a massive earth shattering discount, generally somewhere around 30%. So basically, if you want to play the game anytime soon, I know it might be sad for some, but you're most likely going to have to shell out the full $60. Now Sega, on the other hand, jumps at every major sale opportunity to discount their games and boost the sales. And the best example of this is last year, where even though Sonic Frontiers wasn't even a month old, 
it got generous discounts on Black Friday. And I am predicting that the same will happen for superstars, or at worst, it will hit during the post-holiday sales. And that makes this game a much more likely candidate to hit you with buyer's remorse if you do an early pickup, seeing it on discount just a few weeks later. So of course, what this means is you could also turn this argument around. And if price is your main concern, and you're in no rush because let's say you're just shopping for Christmas or after Christmas, well just wait for Black Friday and superstars might be ripe for a nice discounted pickup. However, as I mentioned earlier, for an immediate gaming need, I would go with Mario and then get Sonic down the road on the cheap. So as you can see, there is a lot pointing towards Mario as the right choice here. However, as I said in the beginning, I really do think both games are great. And for the right player, Sonic can actually be an awesome choice. And heck, if it's in the budget, you can always pick up both games. So if you were on the fence, I really do hope that today's video actually helped. Let me know in the comments down below if it helped you make your choice. And as I said earlier, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and click on that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.